South Africa's high cost of living was one of the talking points at the second leg of the 14th ANC Gauteng Conference, which took place this past weekend in Boxburg. Speaking at the conference, former ANC PEC member Dr. Jose Ramachopa was particularly concerned with the soaring food prices and load shedding crises. He's called for the governing party to focus on resolving the everyday experiences of South Africa. In fact, Dr. Ramachopa joins us uh, this morning for more on the discussion that he uh, tabled at the conference. Dr. Ramachopa, it's great to speak to you on what is a topic that is close to the hearts of, of uh, dare I say, all South Africans, the high cost of living in the country. And it's, it's not a new topic, but you've brought in some interesting facets that you say we now need to focus on as a country, but more specifically, that the governing party needs to focus on to resolve this. Oh, yes. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Michelle, and uh, good morning to the viewers. Thanks for the invitation. Yes, I think um, the African National Congress as a ruling party does take stock of uh, events that are happening across the globe, uh, on the continent, and also domestically, with the interest of um, understanding the nature of those events and how they uh, impact, whether adversely or positively, the prosecution of the transformation project in our country. So I characterized what I refer to as the banning platforms. And you are right, I think the first one is a is an unabated and exponential rise in the cost of, uh, of living. A great part of that is as a result of externalities, uh, the war in Ukraine. We know that Russia and Ukraine put together, they are responsible for 10% of the oil production in the country and therefore what the war does is to suppress supply and as a result the correction will be the increase in the in the price of uh, of brand crude the oil mm -hmm. and of course it has to manifest itself at the level of the pump but it's got the inflationary pressures across uh, across the economy so the cost of uh, of living is uh, is going is is rising but we also know that uh, south africa's uh, total consumption of wheat um, uh, fifty percent of that is uh, is imported, and uh, Ukraine and Russia account for thirty percent of uh, of those uh, imports and We also know that we are importing over eighty percent of our fertilizers, and uh, that part of the world is a, is a significant producer of uh, fertilizers so the aggregate picture is that uh, all of those things are going to have the uh, inflationary pressures, and of course the reserve bank has got the mandate of uh, 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 ensuring that uh, it reigns in uh, inflation, and its response has been the, the increase in the in the repo rate, and of course it increases uh, uh, the degree and extent to which you are servicing your bond, um, all the assets, whatever loans you have with the banks. So essentially, uh, that constitutes, if you like, an attack on everyone, in particular the poor, who've got uh, a, have received a disproportionate impact as a result of increases. So the point simply made there is that the governing party, as the governing party, the African National Congress, has to formulate the responses to this. So there's very little you can do about the war in Ukraine, and uh, it's an externality, but of course the impact is felt uh, here. And so the issues around, I mean, on the fuel front, there was a dispensation that was uh, introduced uh, around uh, May, uh, to um, provide relief uh, to, to the consumer. Um, the government uh, reduced the, the general fuel levy by about 100, 150 per litre. Um, and my view is that uh, we have to sustain that over a period of uh, time until there's, uh, uh, there's um, a, a, a market uh, reduction in the price of, uh, of fuel. And of course, there was an additional intervention of about uh, 75 cents that was also introduced. So it's important that the state must uh, intervene in that space and use all the tools necessary uh, to ensure that uh, we are able to provide the relief to the, to the poor. Yeah, I and mean, if yeah, you put yeah, the price yeah. of fuel into context, just uh, this year alone it has increased by about 34%. If you do year on year, 
May 2021, May 2022, it has increased by a whopping 73.6%. So that's something that uh, requires uh, collective attention. Right. And then the second banning platform has to do with the, um, the, the, the unreliability of energy supply. So that's not an external, external, as a result of external factors. It is of our, our own making. Um, so uh, we have experienced uh, rolling blackouts. I think uh, for the first time since uh, 2009 or so, so we have uh, experienced load sh shedding uh, stage six. And in fact, this time has been intense and sustained. Um, and of course, we are still in the um, in the stages of uh, stage four now, as, as I speak to you. Dr. And we Lofa, haven't experienced this in there? a very long time. Because you, you talk a lot about um, the ANC's response being at the heart of some of the challenges that you've outlined. You say that about e tolls. You say that the ANC must re-articulate its position on the removal of, of e tolls. You also say that about the challenges insofar as ESCOM and the crisis at the power utility is concerned. In fact, you go as far as to say this is not part of an ESCOM problem. It's an ANC leadership problem. What do you mean by that? Yeah. Yes, so, so let, let me just, so on the, on the, on the e-tolls, we, we're simply restating the, the position that we have articulated before. Uh, we say that the, if you look at the, the total network of toll roads in the country, what we call e-tolls, the Houghton Freeway Improvement Project, constitute about 1% of the total toll network. But in, in fact, the expectation was that if we are all paying, the e tolls, it will constitute from a revenue point of view 57% of the total revenue of all told, told uh, uh, income, uh, in road, told road income in the country. So the point we are simply making is that it's not a, a housing initiative, it's a national initiative because 57% of the, that revenue gets to be redistributed across the country to, to finance the construction of, uh, of key uh, national road arterials in the country. And our view is that uh, that should be uh, through a fiscal injection as opposed to burdening the commuter in uh, in housing. Mm -hmm. And on the um, uh, ESCOM issue, so if you look at uh, some of the submissions that ESCOM has made over a period of time and, over the, and also the white paper on energy, as early as 1998, I think ESCOM did warn that uh, if we don't um, uh, bring uh, on board the new generation capacity, their projection was that by 2005, we will be forced to uh, curtail provision of, uh, of uh, electricity or energy to parts of uh, the economy and the country, what you and I refer to as, uh, as load shedding. If you look at the period, I think 1961 to 1981, we, we, we um, were able to um, put in place about uh, 14 um, uh, power stations, but uh, the, the only new power stations that we've introduced, this was in 2006, uh, when the then government realized that there's a need for the state to intervene, because the position that was taken before was that the private sector must be the ones to build new power stations. 2006, we then started to uh, introduce uh, Midupi and Kusile, and as I speak to you, they are not fully completed. So what is the point I'm making? The point I'm making is that we have been alerted as early as 1998 that a situation like this is going to arise because we're putting more people on the grid. We expected the economy uh, to grow and grow rapidly. And in fact, what the, the deficit in the energy supply now represents uh, is a structural weakness. Just the other day I was reading an article that um, with the, kind, uh, with the uh, current uh, installed capacity and assuming that the energy availability factor is upward of 80%, so essentially you have uh, power stations that are operating almost uh, optimally. Um, for us to grow the country by anything, be the economy of the country by anything beyond 1.5%, the current installed capacity at that uh, uh, availability factor will not be able to sustain that growth. So what is it that I'm saying? I'm saying we've had a passage of time uh, over a period of 24 years to make intervention one, to uh, introduce, uh, improve uh, the generation capacity, but also make serious investments in relation to, uh, to maintenance. And that has, uh, has not happened. So you can, you can bring the best brains in the, in the world, can uh, 
uh, go and get Einstein from the grave to help, help uh, resolve the energy problem in the country. You are sitting with a supply problem. And for as long as you, you are not resolving a supply problem, we are going to uh, continue to be faced yeah, with certainly. the certainly. I, I mean, Dr. Damakopa, the point is also that these issues that you've outlined also are just made worse by the incredible scale of corruption and maladministration we've seen at our SOEs, including ESCOM. That's the time we have for this discussion. Dr. Josien Sodamakopa, let me thank you for your time this morning.